Man half monster terrorizes city, abducts women and annihilates men. Well, that phrase may sound like a news headline from an aggravated stop on one of my previous musical tours. It is not. It is part of the marketing jargon that appeared on the lobby card for tonight's film. Welcome to Creature Features. I am Vincent. This is Tangela, and that would be Livingston. The film for which I refer would be 1954's The Snow Creature. A wonderful winter film, perfect for the season. Well, Tangella and I like this film. Livingston's opinion differs considerably. That would be an understatement. You should all change the channel on your televisions immediately. No oh, nonsense, Livingston. It's a splendid piece of cinematic art, which, for reasons I cannot fathom at this particular moment, did not receive any recognition at the Academy Awards. And joining us again as our guest will be our old friend, The Undertaker, who will be here to tell us all about... I frankly don't know. Livingston, what topic will The Undertaker be chatting us up about tonight? I haven't the faintest, but he has parked his car once again in front of the carriage house doors. Hmm. I don't blame him. That wretched building looks like a funeral parlour. In any case, stay with us for another abominably wonderful night of graveyard fright here on Creature Features! <coughs> stay tuned. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television. Coming up. Welcome to Creature Features, and here we are another Saturday night, and it's a gloomy one, isn't it, Mr. Undertaker? Gloomy, wet, cold, and eerie. That's the way we like it. Joining us tonight is our old friend, The Undertaker. How have you been, sir? Quite busy this season, quite busy. Oh, that's not a good thing now, is it, for the rest of us? Um, well, for the rest of you, I hope to have entertained you, confounded you, confused you, and delighted you this season, but... If I did at least one of those things, I know I was successful. Well, if you haven't, we have. Very right? good. 
So The Undertaker, he, he does all kinds of wonderful things. We're going to hear all about those things he does, mostly at Halloween, but he does other things as well. And we're going to watch this film called The Snow Creature, and I know you've seen it. I have indeed. Oh, I have not. Actually, I watched like three minutes of it, and I could not understand any of it. It's, it's, it's not your typical like movie. It's, it's the, actually the first Yeti movie ever. The first Yeti movie ever. 1954. And it plays like a documentary till the end. Oh, that sounds boring. Yes, that's no. correct. All right, you shall be bored tonight, friends. So uh, let's start the movie, then we're going to come back to you and talk about all kinds of fun stuff. But first, let's start this documentary, right, called The Snow Creature. Stay with us. <laughs> Cradled within the arms of the rivers Ganges and Brahmaputra to the south, and the mysterious plateau of Tibet to the north, majestically stands the mightiest mountain range on the face of the earth, the Himalaya. This is the story of an expedition to this rugged barrier, not to assault on its windswept towering heights, but to find and study plant life which had heretofore been unknown or inaccessible. This is the story of that mission, of how a small group of people found themselves in pursuit of a crude and primitive civilization, which once only existed as a figment of the imagination. Los Angeles, California, and after careful study of the region, the first leg of the expedition took me to Bombay, India. to the town of Shekhar, the last settlement before entering the wilderness of rock and ice. There I selected 10 Sherpa natives to serve as porters. My name is Parrish, Dr. Frank Parrish. By profession, I am a botanist working for the Cory Foundation. To record the visual log of our expedition, I engaged Peter Wells, well qualified to serve as a photographer. As our guide, I hired Subra, the only English-speaking Sherpa acquainted with the terrain. Only the most essential equipment was selected and distributed among the members of our party. All preparations completed and everything on schedule. At noon on June 14th, we set out to strike at the mountain. Subra's young wife, Tala, and his brother, Leva, accompanied us to the foot of the mountains before saying goodbye. As we moved on to higher regions, 
the terrain became more rugged and difficult. Wells and I kept up with the Sherpas, who were much like human mules under the weight of our heavy supplies. We continued on to a height of 10,000 feet above sea level, where I wanted to commence my work. At last on the day, we reached the plateau region. Zubra, have your men pitch the tents. Tento hatte kodi pakzu. You may show yours to go. Up to this point, having established only temporary camps, everyone was eager for our first hot meal. Camp one was now well established. Except for a variety of common moss and crucifer flower, we found little of interest. But we decided to comb the area more thoroughly for the next few days. How about a shot? No, thanks. Excuse me, Mr. Doctor. Everything all right? Camp all set up. Everything's fine, Subra, thank you. Alcohol good? Fine. Yeah, help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Doctor Wells. I'm no doctor. Want anything? No, thank you, Subra. I'll see you later. I'll fix nice hot supper. A wonderful tonic. Warms up the gizzards. Keep that up and you'll pickle your gizzard. Wells, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't hand out that stuff to any of the men and don't drink in their presence, understand? Okay. Suits me. Shekhar, come in. Come in, Shekhar. This is Dr. Parrish. This is Shekhar. Yes, Doctor. Let me speak to Inspector Karma, please. We will get Inspector Karma. That night, all seemed well in the town of Shekhar. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best.
Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. And we're back with The Undertaker watching the snow creature. You know, not much has happened in this film yet, but it's going to. So let's let the film develop. But I want to talk about you. Thank you. Because, you'll, you know, we, we seldom get guests as well dressed as this man. Right. And, you know, I like your choice of color as well. It's a nice My shade. wife created this outfit. So I started doing uh, tours of uh, historic houses back in 2012. And I created this character, The Undertaker, for these historic tours, which were always at night. And now they, I do them at my own haunted house, which is on Mare Island. That's oh, every October. but that's just in October. That's just in October. Right. I also host uh, uh, live uh, horror shows. Live horror shows. Yes, so I'm a live horror host, opposed to a dead so horror, how does film that horror work? host. Well, I have uh, worked at uh, the new Parkway Theater. And I work with uh, Bob Ekman's uh, Psychotronic uh, shows. So oh, I host I've his heard shows. that's lovely. Bob uh, is quite an entrepreneur but, uh, and an empresario. He just doesn't like to host his own shows, so he's always looking for a live host. Oh, we know, we know Bob. I think he's quite capable of doing something like that. Bob, I know he's watching. You should host your own show as well. But that would put you out of work, right? That would, well, at least with Bob, yes. No, but, uh, we don't want that to, all right, forget it, Bob. So... <laughs> All right, you, so you do the Haunted House. Yes. You do the Psychotronic Festival right. thing. And then you do something at Christmas. Right. I, is, we, we do the parade in downtown Vallejo. We're part of the Nightmare Island contingent of the Mad Hatter Parade, which we just did. I am completely confused by that statement. So Vallejo has a parade. Vallejo has uh, one of the most well-known Christmas parades in the country. I never knew this. Because Vallejo is the home of 90 fair families and by that i mean 90 families that participate in either the dickens fair or the uh, northern california ren fair or both or the pirate festival or the pirate festival i which love we the have pirate a table festival at. i saw you at the pirate festival yes we that's had a table. right yes i mm -hmm. was the undertaker pirate at that event well it was last year last summer yes yes i was with tangela yes you were yes she and wanted to that see. was um, father's day weekend yeah she got in an argument with a pirate what happened well she didn't say much, but she, she did not like the way he wear, wore his chapeau. And he was, uh, oh, I see. He was quite perturbed with her judging his fashion statement. But I suppose pirates are often touchy that way, aren't they? They are, and I don't want to offend any pirates out there. I don't consider them the most fashionable uh, yeah. beings out there. See, and uh, that's basically what Tangela informed him of as well. So. I would have to agree. Not that I'm a fashion plate either, but... You know, we do what we can do. This is my work uniform. Well, you should wear it every day. But speaking of every day, we've got to get back to this film because it's going to be another day till we see what happens next on that, the that snow true. creature. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back after the next break. But right now, let's get back to the snow creature. Mr. Doctor. Hmm? Mr. Doctor. Oh, super. What is it? Yeti. Yeti, Mr. Doctor. Huh? Yeti! What's all the noise? My brother Riva. He come with four men. They followed us all the way up here. What do they want? Brother say, Yeti steal my woman, Tara. With him. Who after Yeti? 
Yeti, Yeti, what is this? Yeti, creature of snow, snow giant. Oh, you mean the abominable snowman, the phantom of the Himalayas, marauder of women. <laughs> we go after Yeti, find him. Oh, the newspapers and magazines have carried stories about it from time to time, but... Yeah, the sheriffs have built this creature into a horror story. This isn't a hunting party. Thousands of dollars have been spent to finance this expedition, and he wants to chase a legend. Mr. Yeah. Doctor, yet you really, Mr. Doctor. No one's ever seen one. Oh, I know people have brought back stories about these semi-humans. Oh, the whole thing sounds fantastic. Brother say, it is still time. I'm sorry, Sobran. Have your brother and his men join us if they want to, but we have other work to do. I didn't run. Because of my decision, I felt that Subra resented and disliked me. What do you think is going on out there? Well, it sounds like Subra trying to be very important. I better find out. I gave no order to break camp. You move. I'll tell you when to move. We move now. Subra, what's come over you? You sent some of our men away, didn't you? Only four of our men. Other four belong Brother Lever. Concerned with our men, now come back. They look this side of the mountain. We look the other side for Yeti. I'll shoot any man who doesn't obey. <laughs> you know can shoot. Empty, they are taking our cart with you. Subra, this is mutiny. Subra, take guns. All right. <laughs> Where do you intend to look for this creature? Everybody look. Rocky Valley Legion. Oh, that's ridiculous. This part is not equipped for that kind of thing. Subra, no care. Yeah. Well, <laughs> may as well let them go. There's no point in our following along. We might as well turn back. Turn back? No can find a way. We we'll move now. Well, I think I need a drink. Yeah, you'll need more than that. Wait a minute. What about the radio? My joke, that's an idea. Get packed. We move right away. Come on. Come on. Whether Wells and I liked it or not, we had no alternative but to follow along.
wells. Wait a minute. Did you hear something? No, it's just the ruddy wind. I think this is it. Give me some light. Oh, it's my scotch. Never mind that now. There it is. I'd hope they haven't been monkeying with it. Ah, looks all right. Go ahead. Shekhar, come in. Come in, Shekhar. Shekhar, come in. Shekhar, come in. Subra. Subra only want to kill radio machine. Where is the scotch? No, wait a minute. That's my personal Take property. Take it easy, Welch. I like alcohol. <sighs> Mr. Doctor, better go sleep now. Big walk tomorrow. Why? You too. Take it easy. You too. Come on. Come on. Check our police. Oh, I hope so. Wells, have yourself a nightcap. I'll be right back. Oh, thanks, old boy. I will. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. Watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. 
not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. The Undertaker stepped up for a moment so we can do our letter segment where we read letters from you. What do you got, Mr. Livingston? Here's our first letter. Ah. Is she giving you trouble again? Doesn't she always? You know, this poor man just tries to do his job and she just makes his life miserable. Well, of course, it's in his way. He left a skull where there should not be one. Well, where there should not be two. Right. I'm not scolding you. You know, she's very possessive about skulls. You need to be understanding. Skullduggery. Skullduggery, right. All right, our first letter is from... Uh, here we go. John from Kelso, Washington. That sounds like a wonderful place. I've never been. So I'm going to assume it's a wonderful place, but I know it is. Dear Vincent Tangella and Livingston, I just love your show. I've been a fan of your show since 2017. Keep up the good work in watching horror films. They keep America strong. Where have I heard that before? Oh, yes. That's right, they do. Thank you, John from Kelso, and uh, we hope everything's... Oh, he's got a PS. He goes, we watch you guys on YouTube. Well, of course you watch us on YouTube, because we don't have, like, a transmission facility in Kelso, Washington yet, do we? Not yet, sir. Soon. Thanks for writing. Next up, we've got... That thing is in your way, isn't it? Oh, it's all right. Just for one night. Oh, you gave me a big, long, long, long one. I think you'll appreciate this one, sir. All right. So uh, this is from Frank and Mike Davenport. Please, viewers, they do not say where they're writing from, but maybe they'll tell us soon. Dear Creature Crew, my dad and I watch the show every week. That's a lot. Well, thank you. We never even consider watching anything else. Of course, we only get the one channel and have no internet or books, magazines, or even one of those paddle ball things you thwop back and forth endlessly for no earthly reason. It's just the two of us squatting in a field watching a 10-inch battery-powered black and white TV with a cheap HD antenna. I'm sending this email from a stranger's phone in a bus station bathroom. This is, this is amazing. I risked it just to say, keep it up. You all the best entertainment we have Saturday night until we finally get that ball in a cup that is on the back order. P.S. More Livingston and Tangella. Well, I, I'm speechless at this. I, I, have, I, I have no response to this. I, I don't know what to say. So I'm just going to say thank you, Frank, Frank and Mike, for watching us in a field on a 10-inch battery-powered black and white television. That's, this, this is the first of its kind. I thought you would enjoy that, uh, Frank. It's, it's quite interesting. All right, and our last one is Big Type on Big Paper. This is, this is, I can probably read this one without my glasses. I think that was the point, sir. They used a large font. All right. This one says, hey, Vince. And it's from George in Toledo, Ohio. And he says, hey, Vince, love the show, but it would be nice if we could have more of Tangella and Livingston. They are two thirds of the show and you are just hogging too much time. Please make more time for them. Love, George in Toledo, Ohio. All right, well, you've got to understand something, George, in Toledo, Ohio. He's, he's got a day job he's got to do, and we drag him on. So what little we get of Livingston is what little bit he's willing. What would you be doing if we weren't making you do the show right now? I'd be running this whole household, the staff. Which he does, but you would still be doing that. Or like you'd be in your chamber with a pipe and a book. Oh, that would be a joy. Right, right. And then Tangella, she's she's normally out in the graveyard or with a goat, so she's off causing mayhem and havoc, right? So, you know, I get them as much as I can, but most of the time they don't want to be here, and I can somewhat understand why. So I'm stuck doing it. Anyway, thanks for writing, George. That was George, right? George in Toledo, Ohio. How's he? I bet he's watching us on YouTube as well. Right? More than likely. Right. That's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter, 
use your email machine to send it to this address. And if you want to use a, a postal thing or like our friend with the 10 inch black and white TV in the field, you could put a stamp on an envelope with a letter and send it to this address and it will get to Mr. Livingston and from there it will get to me eventually, right? Eventually. Right. All right. We're going to get right back to the snow creature. And when we come back, we will have the undertaker with us. So you stay with us. I found that the radio could be repaired. Wells' case of scotch gave me an idea. Subra, aren't you forgetting something? No one to mention the radio machine. It's dead.
Even Subra could not fight the darkness. At sundown, he ordered the men to make camp. I still think it was a pretty mean trick, leaving my tonic behind. The tubes are all right, but the wires are broken. Oh, now you'll find out after depriving me of my... Wait a minute. of Subra's wife, the footprints, the death of the native. All these things began to fall into a mysterious pattern. We'll be needing oxygen soon. Storm come. You need to find the shelter. Clouds dark. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. 
Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Now, Mr. Undertaker of Vallejo fame, this film with the, the snow creature, he's like a cuckoo clock. He comes out of his cave and he peeks and he comes back in. He, he reminds me of a cuckoo clock. He does indeed. And I think they use the same close-up footage of the creature going forward and backward. Yeah, that One explains. thing that I think they did that was smart was they never show the creature in full light. Oh, that makes it a bit spookier, doesn't it? It does indeed. And Although hides bad makeup. He looks like a werewolf to me. Oh. He's the only brown Yeti I've ever seen. However, this is the first Yeti movie ever from 1954, so maybe they hadn't got the uh, the character, you know, fully evolved. Now, perhaps. you're an expert on these creatures, at least in this room you <laughs> are, right? So I'm confused. You've got Bigfoot, yes. Yeti, Abominable Snowman, well, I'd say the Yeti and the Abominable Snowman are the same creature. Right. And they live in the Himalayas and in Asia in the mountains, and they're generally white. However, as I mentioned, the creature in this movie is brown, so he's probably closer related to a Sasquatch. I'm not entirely sure he's brown. I mean, it's a black and white film. Well, that's true, but he's definitely not white. Maybe he's white and he's simply soiled. He could be. You know, they show his family in this movie. They and show they his look, family. They do. And they look a lot cleaner than he does, his wife and daughter. This is beginning to sound like the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh, my. Let's not go in that area. Well, that's a fine film. I'll leave that to you, your, your opinion no, on that it's, one. It's one of the most sought-after YouTube videos. I looked this up. That, it is indeed. That is true. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it must be good if everyone's trying to find it, right? I'll go with that. I, I think it was so good. George Lucas tried to destroy it. That is true. He did not want to share the magic of that creation. All right, so have you ever seen a Bigfoot or a Yeti? Um, I have a cabin up in the Sierras. You and do? And I have heard some creatures out walking. They're either bears or a Bigfoot. I've never seen any footprints or evidence, but I've seen uh, and heard some uh, unusual things in the dark. So I, I imagine neither would be desirable. Not to see up close, because they generally will kidnap women to mate with. So I imagine that would be a problem as well in any like less advanced society well it's like a lot of uh alien films mars needs women and yetis apparently need women as well oh that's 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 grotesque all right let's talk about something else so we've had sightings around here in california of bigfoot i've heard as close as bodega bay maybe oh. they're being pecked at by birds but i don't know for sure well you know i've never seen one out in the yard so maybe they've all gone extinct by this time, they might have, but maybe not in 1954 when this movie came out. They might have been, you know, at least a small colony of them. What is it about the 50s? All these UFO things and Bigfoot appears in the 50s. I mean, is it maybe just like 
coincidentally the same time these things appeared was the same time television appeared? I think that's partially true, but they uh, were creating these movies to get people out of the house and not to watch television because they didn't have these oh. type of shows on television. Well, that's an interesting concept. I'm going to have to think about that while we watch the movie. All right, let's get back to the snow creature. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Mr. Undertaker about graveyards, right? Yes. I like that topic. Yeah. All right, off we go to the snow creature right about now. Lucky thing for us we found this place. Yeah, it would have been impossible in the tents with this weather. So, Brian. Yes? Very good. You know, you could be a very famous man. Yeah. If we did find this Yeti and brought him back to America alive. So we'd only want to kill Yeti. <laughs> Suppose you did kill one. How would you know it's the one you're after? If there's one Yeti, there must be a whole civilization or a whole tribe of them. So they kill all Yeti. So we don't care. How far up do you intend to go? The top of Everest or Annapurna? Maybe yes. Where are these creatures? Why has no one ever seen one? Yeti, him hide when smell human. But Yeti come to the country when want to steal woman. Always want to steal woman. We'll go until we find Yeti. I think he go sleep now. Move over, Macduff. Too bad. What's too bad? I tried to get to that radio, but it's one of the sharpest packs. Well, we'll just have to wait until we see a better opportunity. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to forget it and go to bed. was not just a legend. I consoled myself with the thought that finding one would more than compensate for my failure as a botanist. Subra was a man possessed. He split the party, ordering the men to search the tunnels and to meet at the entrance of the cave.
place gives me the creeps. Oh, no. uh, it's not the most cheerful place in the world. It's only an animal of some kind. Sobra! What is it? Mountain goat. It's goat. He's not dead. I'll give him a hypo to keep him quiet. Get a tarpaulin. We'll carry him in that. Go on. We found that the female and child of the snow creature had been killed by the cave-in. We held Subra and Leva at gunpoint and ordered them to carry the creature back to the entrance of the cave to meet the rest of the Sherpas. Well, let's get that gun. One false move and I'll shoot. Tell that man to put the radio down. Radio all stay. I'll try to get the check our police. Unable to establish contact with Shekhar, we started down, determined to bring the creature back alive. This is Dave from Casper Valley. Just want to wish you and Tangela Happy New Year and uh, show more monster movies. Show Dracula, show Godzilla, the thing, the uh, Wolfman. Thanks. Uh, been a fan since Bob Wilkins did. Take care. Bye bye. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Gather your friends together around the campfire and listen to scary stories told by Spooky Boo. Horror stories, campfire stories, and scary stories at scarystorytime.com. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned.
Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to the show. We are still with Mr. Undertaker and we are watching the Snow Creature 1954. So, you know, this whole thing about them capturing this snow beast. It, it seems like a King Kong type film. They're going to take it back to the U.S., I imagine. That's that's very true. It, it does follow a little bit like King Kong does. Yeah. They never get a chance to display it, though, if I remember correctly. No. Well, no spoilers. Oh, no, no spoilers, no spoilers no at all. Spoilers. Nobody's seen this film, including myself. But uh, so we'll get back to this film in a moment. But I want to talk about what you do. So, you know, we've got a lot of people who like the whole graveyard concept in you know, hearses and coffins. I mean, what, what's that business like? I find it invigorating. invigorating. I, love, I love to show off cemeteries. I do cemetery tours at night and during the day. I drive my hearse around the Bay Area and people love to see it. I think the funniest uh, reaction I have received to seeing my hearse go down the street is somebody doing the sign of the cross and then running the other direction. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, even, even though it's obviously not occupied. It's not obvious that it's not Oh, occupied. that's wonderful. And then you all drive in like this. It's like... And there's a, there's a place up in Lockford that sells sausage and such. And sometimes I drive by it in my hearse and yell out the window, Hey, everybody, I've got some free meat. Oh, my goodness. That must turn some heads. Well, my wife rolls up the window when I do that because she doesn't think it's funny. I, I bet she's slightly embarrassed. Slightly. 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 So... All right, graveyard tours. Have, what, what's the worst thing you've ever seen in a graveyard? I found a vertebra in a, in a uh, grave one time. In a grave? So yes. you were digging the grave? No. Oh, not at that time. I wasn't working. No, I found a grave that was semi-excavated, and there was a vertebra sitting in it. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So do, who do you call when you find something like this? It's not like they have an 800 number. No, that is true. I called the park service because this was mm -hmm. in, a park, uh, in a park, this graveyard. Oh my goodness. So I called the rangers, and they came out and took it. And well, you know, Tangella goes digging. She she brings back the worst things. She's I, she's obsessed with, with grave robbing. Does this figure have a name? You know, she's probably named it, but, you know, she, she went and dug this up and stuck a candle in it. I got the impression that happened because your skull has been flirting with my skull, and it's very disconcerting. Well, y yours is obviously a bit cleaner. Well, then I'm a little tidier, and I like to clean it up. It looked originally like that. So this is what you carry around when you do the grave. This is my pole. sidekick. This is Scully. So you carry it around on the yes, pole? Yes, yes. I put lights in his eyes when we do our nighttime and tours. And it acts like a lantern. Yes. So you haven't seen any ghosts? I have seen ghosts. You I've have seen ghosts. ghosts? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, if we had more time, I'd want to hear... Yeah. Oh, you're going to tell me this ghost story during the break. I'll tell you what happened when we come back. But first, got to get back to the film, right? Yes. Right. Back to the snow creature. Stay with us. Wells and I took turns watching to make certain that nothing went wrong. We managed to keep the creature in a semi-conscious state, allowing him to come to only enough to take food.
So on the fifth day, we reached the low land region. On the seventh day, as we were nearing the town of Shekhar, I decided to herd the natives straight to the police. Gori Foundation, Los Angeles, California. Hi. Whom did you wish to speak with? Mr. Corey, Jr. Corey, Jr. Hi. Kuchi mawashite kudasai. Hi. As I said, your foundation was granted permission to explore the Himalayas. Your discovery is of a very unusual nature, but it belongs to you, and you are free to do with it as you wish. The inspector kept repeating how friendly his country was and how it welcomed scientists, explorers, and so on. I am sure you will accept my government's apologies, and the natives will be held in custody here we're taking the law into their own hands. Well, thank you. By the way, uh, can I keep the creature here until I can arrange for his uh, transportation? Of course. Of course, he'll have to be fed. And uh, could you give him an injection every six hours? Yes, we shall do that. Oh, by the way, your guide wishes to speak with you. Subra? Yes. Well, son of men. Oi, Subra, Mr. Doctor, Subra. Subra no understand law, no can say if this yeti steal my woman, nobody know. Dr. Karma, I won't prefer charges against these people. Would you back to me in the tail? Thank you, Mr. Duck. Thank you. Oh, forget it, forget it. What's the machine? Hi. Hi. Your telephone call. Will you take it in the next room? Oh, fine. Come on, boss. Hey. Yes, that's the idea. And please send the refrigerator unit as quickly as possible. Fine, fine. I'm leaving for Bombay immediately to take care of all the arrangements. You can reach me there, let's see, in care of the TWA office. Well, good. Oh, uh, would you please call my wife and tell her I'll be home soon? Good, thank you. They're sending us a refrigerator unit to transport the creature in. An air-conditioned affair. What's the matter with you? Well, I don't like the whole thing. What do you mean? Well, it's just this. I could get two or three thousand pounds for that photograph I took, and we should split that money between us. As far as the creature's concerned, well, we should sell him, and then... The photograph, do what you want with it. It's for the creature. He's going to the Cory Foundation, where he belongs. You've just got no business sense. An opportunity like this comes once in a lifetime, and you don't... Did your telephone call come out all right? Oh, yes, thank you. Claire's a bell. I have to leave for Bombay right away, but I'll be back in a few days. Would you see that nobody comes near the creature, including Mr. Wells? According to this cable, your temperature control unit should be here on our cargo flight at 8.40 this evening. Now, the cable says to handle it with the utmost care. Yes, it's very delicate. We'll have to rush it to Shekhar. I've already made all the arrangements to send it and the documents to you. And we'll take care of all other formalities. Thank you very much. We followed your instructions. The injection worked fine. Here he is. Thank you. Now, let's see. Uh, this unit will keep the motor running en route. Uh, this is the temperature control and the self-contained oxygen unit. Food trap. Oh, yes, the food trap. You American, manufacturing a contraption like this on a phone call. Well, I better be going. Thank you very much, Inspector Carl. Have a good trip back to California.
Frank. Golly. Hello, Mr. Corey. Glad to see you. How are you? Well, instead of flowers, I brought you a Yeti. That's what the natives call him. Well, where is he now? Well, he should be here. I sent him ahead on a cargo plane. Really? Yeah. Which one of you is not there, Parrish? Well, I am. Hold on this pretty girl, Doctor, and give us a big smile. Thank you. I'm the Chronicle Doctor. You heard the story about the snowman? Well, just a minute. I just got here. I haven't even talked to my wife. Now, gentlemen, you can reach Dr. Parrish at the Foundation later. Dr. Frank Parrish. Dr. Frank Parrish. Please report to the Customs Warehouse. Well, which way is it? Well, it's easy enough to find out. Come on. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll talk to you later. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked, too. It's popping time! Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Department's main interest 
is to classify this specimen, as you call it, as not being human. Dr. Parrish. Yes, may I? Of course. I'm a little early. Well, that's all right. Dr. Parrish, Dr. DuPont. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Doctor? Has Mr. Corey been here? Not yet. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. A cigarette? Of course, thank you. What an unusual find for a botanist to make. Yes, it is. And you say you also saw a female and a child? That's right. Have you seen the specimen I brought back? No, not yet. Well, we will as soon as Mr. Corey arrives. He called and he should be here any minute. I have said this creature is not human. I didn't say he was. I have to determine whether his brain is a calculating brain. And from that, narrow down all of the theories. But we must have one definite classification. Yes, I understand. From what we know of these, shall I say, snow creatures, they have been a legend. We have seen abstract drawings and heard stories of these nomads, but they were always associated with human traits. started to shake it, and it fell. He got out, and I started to run for my life. A sight I'll never forget. He come at me, and I, uh... Mr. Fleet? I'm Mr. Fleet. I'm Lieutenant Dunbar, police. This is Dr. DuPont, this is Dr. Parrish. What's this all about? Give us a description. Right. Where's the phone? Right over there. Come on, doctor. You can give it to the department firsthand. That's all, Evan. Send it out right away. Would you come with me a moment, doctor? Oh, certainly. Quite extraordinary, Dr. Dunbar. Car 61. Come in, Lieutenant Dunbar. Car 61. Come in, Lieutenant Dunbar. Dunbar, go ahead. Body of a girl found in the alley back of 1220 Coast Street. Repeat. In alley back of 1220 Coast Street. Over. Got it. Out. You hear that, Doctor? I better come along. I think you'd better. Oh, Mr. Fleet! When Mr. Corey gets here, brief him on everything, will you? I'll see you later.
Lieutenant. What's doing, Richards? I thought you were through for the day. Looked that way, didn't it? Any news from the wife? Not yet. The mother-in-law is still with her. Something wrong? My wife and I are having a baby, that's all. Oh, is that all? This way. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Now, let's see. This is the warehouse. Oh, here's Coast Street, where the girl was killed. The distance from here to here is about, say, uh, three miles. Yeah, go on. Well, it's strange to me that nobody reported seeing him from the time he left the warehouse till he arrived at Coast Street. I was late, hardly anybody on the streets. I guess so. He's got to be stopped. Stopped, Lieutenant, but not killed. Is there something else you can tell us about him, Doctor? His mentality, his habits, something? Well, he's acclimated to a high altitude, low temperature. We know all that. Send out this bulletin to all radio stations and newspapers. Tell everyone to stay off the streets and remain calm. That goes for everybody. Right. Well, what do we do now? There's nothing we can do, except wait for him to show up again. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. I'm Crazy Boots Martin. And James the Red. At the NorCal Pirates Festival. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Mr. Undertaker, I think if you or I caught a Yeti, we would not transport him back to the United States in a refrigerated phone booth, now would we? No, we wouldn't do that at all. Although in this movie, they build the phone booth in the United States, and they have the stupidest security guard guarding this creature. One guy who stays there while something happens that he should have run away from. That's pretty typical. Yeah, you know, something similar happened in Horror Express. That's exactly right. And that's yeah, 20 years later. They should have later. learned from that film. Or oh, that film should have learned from them. Who knows? All right. Well, the film is progressing nicely, right? We're going to see some troubled things going on. Yeah, we're finally in the U.S. in right. Los Angeles. Right. All right. This is 
This is where the things come down. Exactly. But let's talk about this psychotronic thing you do. So you brought some films. Right. These are 16 millimeter movies, which we used to see in school, mostly industrial films and a lot of 35 millimeter films. But that's not what you're going to show. At oh, well, I am only the host of the psychotronic right. festival. That's but you're not Bob Eklund's baby. Educational films. We do. We show oh, bumpers. You do? We show trailers from television shows and movies. Oh. We show educational films, and Bob Ekman has quite a large collection of 16 millimeter that he very uh, skillfully puts together into uh, a movie segment, and he shows them at the mm. Ream Theater and at uh, the Foothill uh, College down in uh, the South Bay, and he actually had a psychotronic film night at our Nightmare Island this past year as well, which was very successful. Wonderful. So this is something that you buy tickets to and get popcorn and sit in a chair. Very and much enjoy. so. Right. And then you like sit in a chair and talk like I do. Well, I generally come up uh, and introduce the show and I might come in before the intermission. But uh, I uh, like to give people time to enjoy the show and not see as much Undertaker. I feel that the less they see of me, the more they want to see of me. Oh, well, that's the way right. I feel, at least. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So how many years have you been doing this? The Undertaker? No, the Psychotronic oh, Film well, thing. Oh, well, no, I'm new to the under the Psychotronic uh, Film Festival myself. I've been attending it for several years, however. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. All right. And so Bob Ekman does this, and he has some help. Yes. I, I'm remiss if I don't mention his partner in crime, Mr. Scott Moon. Scott Moon is wonderful. He, he redid the... Uh, the Creature Features theme, the old one. Yes. Not the one that we show at the beginning. Right. But the one that we show in all our bumpers and stuff. Right. He did a great job at and that. And he's talking to me about uh, doing a theme for me, Scott, if you remember, because The Undertaker needs a new theme that's not copyrighted. There's no scolding allowed on Creature Features. Oh, I broke you, a cardinal rule. You I have apologize. to scold him in person. That's I will what, do it. That's I what will. I do. All right, well, let's get back to the rest of the snow creature. It's going to get even better. It does get better, yes. He promised. Enjoy. And we will be back after the two breaks, right? Maybe? I don't know. We'll be back either way. See you soon. Attention all citizens. This is an urgent public service bulletin from your police department. A dangerous killer beast is at large. You are asked to remain indoors. This is an urgent public service bulletin to all citizens. A dangerous killer beast is at large. Get out of here. But you don't understand. Give me a chance to explain, please. I'm sick of listening to your words. But, but please. Now you stay away from me. You... And if I never see you again, it'll be too soon. Now get out of here. But.
Got it. Who's on the job? Right. He's showing up again. Where? He chased a girl near an all-night pharmacy. Let's see. He started here. Then he appeared here. And now, right here, the pharmacy. He's got to be within that triangle. Instruct all units in sectors 15 and 16 to converge at area 11. Right. How about some more coffee, Doctor? Yeah. yeah. Charlie, you got any more coffee? Two reasons to face the floor. Yes? But that's impossible. We've got that whole area swarming with men. Are you sure? Right. What is it? What happened? This whole thing is cockeyed. These are the three areas. Logically, then, the force should be in here. But it isn't. He was just spotted at a meatpacking house way out here. Well, how did he get out of that area? Isn't it covered by the police? That's a $64 question. It's a distance of almost seven miles. And nobody's seen him from there to there. That's right. There are only two ways that this thing could get around. Walking and flying. He hasn't got wings. Any normal person could hide out at a hotel or any place. This is a white elephant. Any three-year-old child could spy him. The question is, how does he cover seven miles without being seen? Just an idea, Lieutenant, but I think I've got something. What is it? The storm drains. I don't get it. Some of those openings are big enough for two men to crawl into. You mean the catch basins? I think you've got something there, Doctor. Get me the city engineer at his home. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Edwards, that's it, Edwards. The Department of Public Works is right around the corner. So wake him up. Drainage and sewer system of the city are a lot cooler than the external temperature. I told you the creature had intuitive powers. He could have sensed the colder temperature. And that would explain why he was never seen from jump to jump. Do you have a complete chart of the storm drains? Lieutenant, there are 4,800 miles of storm drains onto this city. We got lots of charts. How about the east end? Yeah. Cigarette? No, thanks. You know, Doctor, there are drains connecting these areas. We've got something to work on. Mm-hmm. Hey. 
There we are, Lieutenant. That's the area. Here are the spots, Doctor, right along the train lines. Can I take this with me? Yes. Thanks, Edwards. Sorry to wake you. Oh, that's all right, Lieutenant. Think nothing of it. Anything for the police department. Now, Richards, get eight men. Issue the works. They shouldn't be too much. Walkie-talkies, lamps, rubber boots, and so on. Right, Lieutenant. The 12 hours. The first detail will start here at 11th and Grand, near the warehouse. The second at Coast Street, where the girl was found. Coast. Dr. Parrish, myself, and a couple officers will start here at the pharmacy. The first detail will work to the north, the second to the south, and we'll work eastward. The time within the hour, we should all meet right here. Got it? Check. Hurry it up. All right, all right. Well, Lieutenant, can we take it not along? Sure. Hey, Richards, get a big net and some poles to go with it. Right. And uh, leave word where I'll be in case the hospital calls. Yes, Mr. Let's go. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. As men tied to the earth, we dream of visiting the stars. As men tied to the stars, we will dream. Of returning home. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Gather your friends together around the campfire and listen to scary stories told by Spooky Boo. Horror stories, campfire stories, and scary stories at scarystorytime.com. Hi, this is Janine and Tiffany. We're in Oakland at the Kraken Con. You're, You're watching, watching North, North Bay, Bay TV. TV. Stay tuned.
Can you make out anything? Not yet, Lieutenant. Proceeding south according to plan. Over. How about you, Roberts? Anything happen at your end? Not yet, Lieutenant. Stay in contact.
as you say, Doctor. Yeah. I'll have Dr. DuPont give you instructions where to send the body. Come in, car 6-1. Dunbar. That you, Lieutenant? Yeah, we just finished the job. What is it? Very urgent call. Proceed immediately to Crescent and Elm. Urgent. Over. Who gave that order? Don't you know what time it is? I don't know, but there's a creature waiting for you. Eight pounds, three ounces. A boy, Lieutenant. Mother and son are doing fine. Congratulations, Pop. Thanks a lot, Vince. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Al. Well, I guess that's it. Good luck. I guess I better be going. I guess you had. Come on, Doctor. I'll drop you off on the way. Oh, no, no. You haven't got time. Sure I have. Come on. All right. My wife must be pretty worried by now. Say, Doctor, what's your first name? Frank. Maybe I'll name my kid Frank. Frank Dunbar. It sounds great. Thanks. I don't know. I'm not too sure I like it. And so brings down the curtain on the snow creature. You know, that's a terrible way for a Yeti to die in a sewer. Very familiar ending. I think I saw that in the movie Them, which came out the same year. And they did the same thing. Yes. They killed a Yeti. Uh, it wasn't a Yeti. He had longer legs, but it was very oh. similar. And it wasn't the same screenwriter. So maybe that was the trend for that year. I have not seen that film or I have not seen Them, I should say, which would be confusing if I did not say that film, right? But uh, yeah, the sewer thing, that's, that's like, I'm surprised they would do something like that in the 50s. Well, it was atmospheric, definitely. You saw more of the creature at the end of the movie as well. Right. Big furry right. paw and everything. Yeah. Well, I think it was an all right movie. I, I like it. I think I did. Maybe. We'll see. So what are you doing next? Well, I have Halfway to Halloween, which is a fundraiser for our fundraiser, Nightmare Island. And that's coming up uh, in the halfway to springtime. Halloween. It's a big Halloween flea market we have at our haunt on uh, Mare Island. Right. And that'll be in the springtime. We had 40 vendors selling Halloween related items. Halloween related items. Yes. Costumes so, and props and things. Oh, you know, if you've got extra stuff, you can go to your flea market and sell it. Exactly. Right? So what do you do? You rent a table or... Yes, you can rent a table. Actually, you can look at our website, which is www.nightmareislandvaleo.com and get right. more information. Let me do that. So that's www. Right. Nightmareislandvaleo.com. That's a long one. It is. All right, but people can go there and yes. they can learn everything. And you've got Psychotronics coming up. We have Psychotronics coming up. And you're going to be at the Pirate Festival. Going to have a table at the Pirate Festival and as well. that's June, yes. right? That is June, Father's Day, mid-June. They always do that on Father's Day, don't yes. they? Yes. It's, it's, you know, it's an interesting time because there's lots of fathers that like to be pirates. That is true, and their kids like to be their sidekicks. They're Smee. Smee. Yeah. Which it is, was Smee. That would be the sidekick to uh, Peter Pan's uh, oh. uh, arch nemesis, oh. Captain yeah, Hook. So, well, it sounds like you're quite a busy man. But Indeed. thank you for taking the time to come to our show and educate us about this film. Of course. And All don't right. forget our Hearst Club, too which is, of course, no NorCal Dead Sleds. All right. NorCal Dead Sleds, hearses, pirates, Halloween. This man is like a bundle of joy and fun. All right. 
thank you for coming. And as far as you guys are concerned, we're so happy you joined us. We had a fun night now, didn't we? I think Tangela had fun, didn't you? She normally does have fun because she's, she's a fun-loving gal. So hopefully we'll see you next week. We'll have another film, we'll have another guest, and uh, we'll have all kinds of fun again. Have a wonderful weekend. So, Mr. Undertaker, I'm really intrigued with this whole undertaking grave digging business, and I'm wondering if I might be able to, like, accompany you on your next dig. Well, I'm sorry to say you don't have the right experience, but I'll take Tangella.